greetings from the land of OP. I am Rob the OP Gamer and today I am bringing you another episode of my Build Spotlight series where I show you how to build something with all the automation and combining mods to make it awesome and to kick all the ass. Uh, today I'm going to bring another uh, Agrarian Skies to the theme Build Spotlight. Last time we did a Build Spotlight I went over um, Free Infinite Loots which is over here and we set up a little system over here for barrel storage. So basically, we got auto clickers clicking the tables and making us loots, and it's all fantastic! And if you want to see how that happened, go check out the last build spotlight. It's a Gary Skies theme, free infinite loots. I'm going to get rid of this stuff, though, because we're not using this for today's spotlight. I'm going to switch over from pipes. Give me that. Uh, we are going to switch over from a pipe system to an applied energistic system. And I'm going to just destroy all this, I think. Can I just... Yeah, there we go. We'll just ship, we'll just kill all this, but it doesn't really matter. We'll just inf we'll just generate new loots. It does not really matter worth a damn. I'm gonna pop all this out of here. There was a couple of good comments in my last episode about how to actually set this up a little better than I did, but I've been trying to be really concise with my build spotlights recently because they kind of tend to run long. I know some people don't like them taking as long as they take, so I've been trying to trim them down. But I like to show all the automation because some people. They pop you two open, they're like, hey, I want to see what's going on, I want to see how to build this shit, and then they show you one thing, and you're like, oh, fuck. So then you gotta go watch hours of builds and hours of playthroughs, and that's what kind of this whole thing is supposed to avoid in the first place. So, I'm going to just trash all this shit really quick here, and what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna switch this over to a Applied Energistics system. Um, I don't tend to actually like to do Applied Energistics for storage, I like to use deep storage units to hold all my loots with storage buses, but I'm gonna, just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna show you guys how to set that up. Well, I'll, I'll show you both ways to set this up, actually. We're gonna go over a couple different things, but today's episode is gonna be about automatic ore processing, how to turn this all into usable ore on a regular basis. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we are going to pop out of here. Let's get into our Applied Energistic setup. I'm gonna go uh, at Applied. And the first thing, the first and foremost thing you're going to need for an applied energistic system, for those of you who don't know, even though probably most everybody does know, is an ME controller, which is going to be four iron ingots, four flux crystals, a advanced processing assembly. The flux crystal is one quartz, one nether quartz, and one redstone. This has gotten out of your uh, your free infinite loots. The nether quartz is going to be out of um, sieving uh, soul sand, which you get from putting sand in a witch barrel. Which, if you guys want to see how to go about doing that, I can show you later. Uh, leave me a comment below if you want to see how to do automated soul sand sieving. We can do that at a future point. Uh, so we're going to get a controller here. And the um, advanced processor is you smelt a processor assembly, which is a diamond, the quartz cutting knife, silicon, and two redstone. The silicon, oh hey, raw plastic makes one. That's cute. Smelting another quartz dust or a surface quartz dust. And of course, your quartz cutting knife is two sticks, two of any kind of quartz, and an iron ingot. So that's how it's going to be made. We're going to plop this guy down somewhere he can get power. So I'm just going to stick him over here, because that's all, that's part of our power line. Um, I kind of don't like that, though. This all has to be wired up, so... Oh, also I wanted to point out that these can break. You see how we got some lava over here and some cobble over here, and it's not all getting used up? That's because these are broken. There's an issue with the chunk loading. I'm not exactly sure. I've run into this with my actual play series as well. The only way to fix this is to completely remove these and replace them. So you're going to have to go through here and you're going to have to wrench right click to pick this up uh, and then put it re down and then right click that and then pull that out and then that will actually fix that. And you have to do that with every single one of these. So the lava power, fluid ducts in particular, it's the thermal expansion ducts. The power ducts break, the redstone energy conduits break, and the uh, fluid ducts break, and the item ducts break. So every now and again, if you find that you're having issues because you hit F9 twice, you can see how we cross the chunk boundary here. F9 shows you where your chunk boundaries are, and if you see, you can see that we cross, and so that's kind of right where things broke down there. Um, so if you're crossing chunks boundaries, these stop talking to each other. So the game thinks that this is one fluid conduit system, and then this is one fluid conduit system, and this is one fluid conduit system. So it broke the entire system. So instead of being one sinuous line, it thinks there's three right now. And the only way to do that, to fix it, is to re-break and re -all, redo all these. So make sure that you build your conduits within a chunk boundary and have some sort of buffer system between the chunk boundaries. That's the only ways we've kind of found to police it, and by we I mean uh, my friend and server admin Xavier McMage. Uh, we played a lot. 
Uh, so make sure to build everything within one chunk boundary if you're going to go heavy on your cables and pipes or just tesseract things around and use AE because that's that's how I fix things. So anyway, um, I'm going to plop this guy down. I don't think it really matters where we stick it. So I'm going to just stick it right here. And he's instantly going to get power. And I'm actually going to cheat. I'm going to get a uh, creative energy mode cell. You can't make this. There's no recipe for this in any eye. If I hit R for recipe, you can see there isn't one. Uh, it's just infinite power forever, basically. So he's going to have infinite power forever. And actually, that's not where I want to put it. I'm going to stick him underneath because we don't need to see him. Let's do that. And then we'll get the brick right there. And then we can just string a cable to it. So it really doesn't really matter. I'm actually going to disconnect this because that doesn't need to be there either. So that doesn't actually need to be there. But for just for simplicity's sake, if this was your actual power system, you would put it on your power line. So now we have a controller. And now what we're going to... What the hell? That was weird. Oh, shit. Anyway, so now that we got a controller, um, the way we're going to smelt these, we need to set up storage. So let's make an ME drive. So we're going to go ME drive. And you can go right here, and you can see that it's just four iron ingots, two gold assembly. The only difference here between this and the advance is a diamond versus a gold. And then you're going to get a chest, of course, eight of any kind of plank. And you're going to make a drive. And the drive is going to hold your storage chips. So you can just stick him right next to the controller. And if we right click the controller, we can see he's now powering himself in one drive, which is 1.6 millijoules a tick. It is 100 RF a tick per 1 millijoule per tick, if you want the conversion for your RF power. So that's how it's going to work. And we're going to get storage chips. And I'm just going to get a couple of giant storage chips and just jam them in there. You can do things as differently as you want to, but I'm going to go ahead and grab... Wow, 2 to the third spatial storage. That's from... Stores up to 16 by 16 by 16. What the shit? I've never seen these before. Is this a placeable thing? No? Does it go on the drive like the 64 does? No, it doesn't. I have no idea what this is or how to use it. Anyway, so we got one storage unit right here. 64 storage. You can see this stores up to 63 types of items or up to 65,536 bytes. Uh, this guy is pretty expensive. You can see it's one storage cluster, three redstone, two glass, and two iron, uh, which is made out of... Each one of these is made out of a storage block, three storage blocks, four glowstone, one of those advanced processors, and glass, which is three. Each one of those is three of these storage segments, which is three of these storage cells and redstone and a basic assembly. Storage cell is four certus quartz and four redstone and a processor, which basically what it translates down to is a 64K storage unit is 108 certus quartz. That's what that basically translates down to. I like to... Fig I like to um, format these bitches so that the I have like one for each thing so I end up with walls of drives when I do this because I usually do AE what I normally like to do for my storage personally though is I'll take and I'll make a deep storage unit from mine factory reloaded here and I'll plunk him down and then we get a storage bus and I will put the storage bus on the back of him here Uh, the deep storage unit is made by taking a tesseract frame full, uh, four reinforced strong boxes and four plastic sheets. Get you four of them. Uh, the reinforced strong box is one hardened one and four hardened glass, which is of course your leadstone or your your pulverized lead or your lead ingot and eight pulverized obsidian, which is four from each obsidian dust. And this guy, of course, is going to be a regular strong box with four iron bar, which is a blend, of course, of your two iron and your one redstone or your one pulverized ferrous metal, or you can just smelt nickel, which works with iron. And the strong box is four tin and a chest. And the tesseract frame, of course, is going to be you put one mil, one mil, one thousand milli buckets. Good God, I can't talk today. One bucket worth of vendor into a tesseract frame gives you a full one. Uh, you get a magma crucible and you melt down four ender pearls. Each ender pearl is two hundred fifty milli buckets, as you can see right there. And then the Tesseract frame is one diamond, four more of those hardened glass, and four resin, uh, four Enderium ingots. Enderium ingot is a induction smelter recipe. Stick uh, pyrothium dust and two Enderium blends get you two of them. The Enderium blend is three pulverized tin and a pulverized shiny metal and a bucket of resonant ender. So you need two buckets of resonant ender per cell, basically. Or per um, full Tesseract frame. Okay. And then the... Oh, backspace, excuse me. The pyrothium dust is going to be one sulfur, one pulverized coal, one redstone, and one blaze powder. You get two of those guys. In case you were curious. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab a ME cable. ME cable. Just a regular cable. Connect this guy up right here. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to get an access terminal. Access. And the access terminal so we can see what the hell is inside the dam. There we go. So we look in here, we see there's nothing in here. This shows you what's in the system. If I were to stick, this guy is going to be, we're going to set him to priority 10 and him to priority 10. And I'm going to grab a bunch of cobblestone here. And the reason I go deep storage units usually is because they could, they're like barrels. They can hold one of each thing, but they can hold up to two billion of one item. I don't even know how many stacks that is. I don't even give a fuck. But if we look in here, we can see there's 64 because the storage bus is telling the system, hey, this is a storage thing. And we can even tell us, hey, partition the storage based only on what's in there. And he will say, okay, only cobblestone goes in here. Because this won't accept anything else now except for cobblestone. So now we can see that if we put more cobblestone in there, that'll just go straight in there. Now we can see we got 192 because there's three stacks in there. This is one stack plus whatever's here. Now if I throw something else in there, like if I throw a dirt, we'll be like, bam. Now we have 64 dirt in there, but it's not in here. It's stored in the chip. You can see one type of 63 used, 520 bytes used, because that's the dirt. So now it knows what's in there. So you can take your pick. Um, this is going to take a lot of space, though, because it's like a barrel. So you need, like, I have walls and walls of this in my actual playthrough, because obviously I cheat my build spotlights to show you guys how to do things. So I end up with, like, barrels full and barrels full and barrels full of these things. Or if you don't, if you want to conserve space, then you can, um, easily just make these drives, because basically each drive can hold a lot of shit. You can just fill up these, uh, 64K storage cells in each drive, and this is basically like one... These full storage chips are about the size of a diamond chest, if you want to think of it that way. But of course they can hold a little bit more in terms of... Like, they can hold 63 types of items, but they can hold a lot of they can hold a lot of stacks of stuff. So you can put, instead of like in a diamond chest, if you have like 10 stacks of something in there, it's taking up 10 slots. But if you put like a ton of stacks of something in this chip, it will still say 1 out of 63 types, and it will just tell you that you got 100 or like more, you know, a couple hundred of them in there. So it's a little bit more space efficient to do this, but it can't hold as much as a barrel can, obviously, by like a good, by like a good bit of stuff. So it's really up to you how you want to do this. I'm just for the sake of the video, I'm gonna grab a few more of those storage chips. Uh, you really got to pay attention for your system overflowing if you end up using your storage, going the storage chip route, which is another reason that I tend not to, in my own personal way that I do things. But there, we'll just stick a couple of those in there. And of course, you don't have to go with the biggest chip; you can go with the smaller chips. So instead of doing 64K, you can do 16, and it's one of those storage blocks instead of one of the full-on uh, storage clusters, and it's a lot less expensive that way. But then again, of course, you sacrifice the amount of space you can get. Blah, 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 get to the rest of the build. So we are going to get ourselves some seared stuff. Let's get a seared tank. Let's get a seared glass. Or no, we don't need... Don't fuck this. Well, we'll get, one, we'll get some seared glass just so we can see what's in there. And uh, what else? Let's just start laying this down over here. Seared bricks. Uh, this is going to be automatic ore processing, so I'm going to start this up over here. We're going to just find ourselves a nice, at the very center, nice. I like that. That fits perfectly. So this is from, of course, Tinker's Construct, and we're going to make ourselves a, um, just lay out a uh, basic smeltery setup. Uh, we're going to get the seared tank. I'm going to put the seared tank back here, and we will get a controller. And the controller is what actually controls the damn thing, go figure. And I'm going to put him, uh, let's just say right there. Because why not? Why the fuck not? We're going to put seared glass in the center. I think right there, just so we can see inside there. Is going to be the idea here. And it's kind of like a little, uh, kind of like a little thermometer really. It just kind of shows you what's inside there. Just so you can just kind of glance at it and see. And now there's a couple ways to do this. Well, basically what's going to happen is we're going to have the AE system dumping the stuff in there. So the automatic loot processing that we got, the automatic auto clickers over there making us at free infinite loots is going to dump into the AE system, which will then dump uh, processable things in here. And by processable things, I mean stuff like your iron and your copper and your tin that you're going to want to be uh, storing. Obviously you don't want to have to sit here and mess with your smeltery forever on your own. And of course we'll get some torches up here so we don't have to worry about that. And the way that you're going to do your smeltery setup is you are going to want to be able to automatically smelt things, so the controller is going to be bringing things in. Now, you, go, you have to be careful because among the dusts and things that these autoclickers are going to get you, you're going to get nickel and you're going to get aluminum, and you obviously don't want to accidentally make alloys. Uh, you're concerned basically only with the production of metals. You only want to see like gold and iron coming out of this. You don't want to mix nickel 
for example, with your iron, because you're going to get Einvar, which is fantastic to have some Einvar around, but the problem with Einvar is the fact that, obviously, you want to have some iron. You can't make everything out of Einvar, which would be awesome if you could, but you can't, so don't even worry about doing that. The What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set up at least two smelteries, um, and they can be as big as you want to. I just made really big ones over here, but, uh, hey, it was a really big one. But obviously, like, I think in my, my actual, my normal playthrough, when we actually played through the map, I just did one smeltery per, um, ore, and, but I did really little, I did seven ores, so there's, let, let me think about this really quick, there's iron, there's gold, there's copper, there's tin, and there is silver, that's five right there, but then there's also the shiny metal or platinum, which is going to be a sixth one. And then there, what else do you want to process? There's one more that I'm forgetting off the top of my head. Uh, what the fuck is it? Lead. That's the other one. So that's seven smelteries. Because you don't need you don't need ingots of nickel and you don't need ingots of aluminum because those are used for making um, alloys. So obviously you want to use those only at will. Only at the times in which you want to use them do you want to actually have them available to be dumped into something. So I never actually, I combine them for storage, but I don't ever actually put them in the smelteries. So basically you can do like two big smelteries like this, so you can dump all of your aluminum and stuff in here, you can dump, um, well let me think, you can dump, you just don't want to dump anything that can combine, so you can dump like let's say uh, gold and silver, actually no, gold and silver you don't want to do that because you might get electrum, so do like gold and iron and uh, tin over here for example and whatever else not and then do like copper and like lead and stuff over here and they won't combine they'll just sit there until they get poured out so let's do this now that we got a couple of smelteries going on I'm gonna grab another tank I'm gonna grab the creative tank here this is another thermal expansion creative mode only it doesn't ever actually have a recipe you can't make this in normal gameplay but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this here for lava purposes because our lava generation over here would normally keep up but I don't want to string conduits over here because I don't want it to break while we're in the middle of the playthrough in the system here so I'm gonna grab myself a fluid duct uh, fluid duct there we go and I'm gonna grab a servo and, no, actually, I don't need servo. I'm going to grab a bucket of lava. That way we can do this. And what this what this creative tank will do for us is it will basically give us infinite lava forever. Doink! That way the smelter can be fueled. And the only reason I'm doing that... Oh, that was a terrible, horrible fuck-up. There, we want that right there. Nice. And we'll just switch this to output mode. And the reason that we're doing this is, of course, because I don't want to generate lava. This is only because this is a this is a build spotlight for showing you how to do the smeltery. Uh, obviously, you want to connect it to your lava generation, but this is broken and I don't want to fix it right now. So just assume that we're connecting the lava generation to the smeltery. In a normal playthrough, that's what you would do. This is only because we want to be able to get this going for you guys. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get our drains. We need seared drains. And if you look through a... What the fuck is the book called? Materials and You? Yeah, that's it. You start with one of these bitches, and if you look in the book, you can see how to make all these things. So you can see to make the patterns, and then you can see how to make the bricks. There we go. It'll show you right there. It'll be like, get your grout by combining clay with gravel and sand, and you cook that into your seared bricks, and you can use your seared bricks to make the bricks and the controller, and... Um, then you get another book, and it will walk you through the process, so I'm not really going to cover it, obviously, because the bricks, they each have a recipe. Uh, there's the there's the drain, there's the controller, uh, there's the bricks, there's the seared tank with the, any kind of glass in the center, there's the seared glass, it's still the same as the bricks, but you add glass to it so you can see through it. Blah, blah, blah. These are pretty easy to do, so you don't need to worry about that. I should probably hide this, actually, come to think of it. Hmm. Let's move you guys, because I need access to under here, so I'm going to pop this out of here. Let's get down here, and I'm going to put this tank. He only outputs downwards. So let's put him right here. And I will just do one of these number. That looks good. Yeah, that'll do. And I'll do the same thing over here really quick. And the reason why we're doing this is because I need room over here to put our casting tables in a second here. There we go. That's good. Cool. So, the drains, we're going to do, like, right here. Okay? And let's do one on the sides over here as well. And 
and we'll do the same here. And we'll do the same over here. You need enough for seven things to be processed, so that's four. Two, four, six. We can do on the back as well, that's fine. You can even do in the front if you really wanted to, it doesn't matter. You don't need one smeltery per ingot, though. I found that out in my playthrough because the smelteries just don't... Like, mine were only three high. I only did a three high smeltery, and it was for each ore type, and they never fill up. But, <laughs> like, once the actually, once you get caught up with the amount stored, like, when you initially build this, you're like, okay, I've got, you know, tons of stacks of everything needs to get smelted and burned and uh, processed, and you're like, oh, shit, that's going to take forever. And it does. It takes a while to catch up. But once you're caught up, this thing will keep up with your automatic clickers just fine, so you don't need to worry about it too much. Uh, one big thing, uh, let's get our casting base in here. And we're going to put these along where we put each of these. There we go, just like that. And just like that. And that's going to be our basins, right? And then what we're going to do is we are going to put in a... There's two ways now. There's two. There's two ways you can go from here. And the first way is you can just dump straight into one of these smelteries. Like if I do this, let's just take our iron. Okay, so we have iron dust ore, and we have pulverized iron. Okay, and this is going to be iron dust ore. If we click usage here, we can see that we can put this in the smeltery. There we go. You burn one iron ore dust in the smelter, you get 2.88 millibuckets of molten iron. What this boils down to is you're going to get two iron ingots out of one iron ore dust. Okay. Now, if we click usage on here, we can see that this is going to be 72 millibuckets. This is going to be two of these to one ingot. So it doesn't matter if you combine them or not, except for space in the controller. Because we can stick this in here, we can stick this in here, we can see that they're both burning up. But they both take up a space in the smeltery. If we look inside the smeltery, you can see they're both in there. There's a full block and there's a partial. Okay. But they're both taking up one slot. So if you build a really tall smelter, you don't have to worry about it so much because it's really tall and it can hold a lot of things. But if you uh, if you're worried about space, let's say you're building this inside your base, you only have like a like a nine by nine room that's only like four tall. You don't have the room to build this. They they take about the same amount of time to process as the other one does. But you are you're gonna have to build four of these. You need four spots for the same space as one of these. So if you want to auto auto craft these into blocks because you can see that you can use four of these to make a block and it's the same with the crushed and the broken ores as well as the dust because you get one out of sand one out of dust and one out of uh, gravel over here from our auto clickers so if you want to auto craft these you have to build an auto crafting setup to do that which is going to be your me do i have where's there it is so you're going to need your me containment walls which is right here you're going to need your heat vents, you're going to need your crafting CPU, and you're going to need your pattern... And, nope, that's in the encoder. We need the provider. Where's the pattern provider? Where the fuck is the pattern provider? Oh, I'm going to go nuts! Oh, it's right the fuck there. Okay, cool. So, you're going to want to go over here, and you're going to take one of these, and you're going to say, okay. And you're going to have to have at least a three... Nope, oh, that's a heat vent. By four, I believe. One, two, three. Yeah. So at the very least, you have to build a three by four, three by three by four tall containment wall like this. It's the border edges are going to be the containment wall, which is going to look like that. Four iron ingots, four gold ingots, and one service court in the middle. Each one of these. Uh, the heat vent is going to be four iron bars, which you get 16 from six of them. And one of the ME cables, which is... Uh, three flux dust and six glass or six raw plastic will get you four or three respectively. And then the heat the heat vents are going to go on the are going to be the insides of the walls basically like that. Okay. And this is a multi-block structure and it has to be connected to the rest of the ME network in order to be used. And then you're going to take your crafting CPU, which is going to be one of those advanced processors we already covered: two glowstone, four iron ingots, and two certus quartz. You put at least one of those guys in there because each one of those guys can do one operation per tick and then a pattern provider is going to be two conversion matrices, one of the advanced processors, a crafting table, storage cluster that we already covered, and four iron ingots. The conversion matrix is going to be two of the fluid dust we looked already, already looked at, which is two nether quartz and a redstone get you two, or two like another quartz dust, one service quartz dust, a redstone, and a raw plastic will get you four of those from Mine Factory Reloaded. 
the basic processor, one of each kind of quartz, and you need at least one of these guys to hold patterns. Okay, then you close this off and it all turns into a nice multi-block. And we can right click here, we can see it holds one of one page of crafting things. Awesome. So now we have to get a pattern encoder. We're gonna slap this guy right here. And this guy is going to be made one of those conversion matrices, seven iron ingots around a crafting grid. And then we need a blank pattern or 50. Blank pattern is going to be made out of four, uh, three glowstone, three iron ingots, one surface quartz, and two glass. These go up here, and what we're going to do is we're going to tell us, hey, hey, we're going to tell this guy, hey, iron, four pulverized iron. We can just do this. Actually, you can look up the recipe. You can either click it manually on here, and it will bring up what it makes if it's a normal crafting recipe, or if I click usage and I sh hold shift and click this question mark, it'll put it in there for you. You click in code, and bam. And now you can put this in here, and now your system knows that it can craft a uh, one iron ore dust with four pulverized iron ore. And so if I stick this in here, the system will tell me, hey, you've got 64 pulverized iron ore, and you're like, fantastic. And if you say, hey, uh, show me sorted items, craftable items, or sorted and craftable, you can see, hey, we don't have any iron ore dust, but we can make one. I can say, hey, begin make me one of these, bam. Four dust goes, four pulverized iron ore goes away, and I get one dust block. Awesome! So that's how that's going to work out. And you're going to want to do this with each of the different materials. One, you could do it with iron, you're going to do it with lead, you're going to do it with gold, you're going to do it with silver. I'm not going to set up every single fucking one of these, but just to show you guys how to do this, I'm going to set up a couple. So I'm going to dig down underneath it here. I'm going to preserve this nice, beautiful little starting area that the platform came with. So we're going to dig underneath. And I'm going to get an ME cable. ME cable. There's that. And we are going to run this down underneath here. I'm actually going to get way down under here. And we're just going to string this cable over here. And we are going to bring this over to our smeltery. Now, as a quick little, I'm going to tell you guys two little facts here. Uh, number one, you don't have to only do this in agrarian skies. This will work on any map, in any any sort of build of any sort of map in which you have the mods installed to do all this. You need uh, Tinker's Construct, you need Applied Energistics, and you need Ex Nihilo, which gets you the free infinite loots forever. So you can do that with all these mods at the same time, as long as you have those things installed. Uh, the other thing I'm going to let you guys know is that you can also do um, shit. I lost my train of thought. I was looking for that that fucking export bus. I lost what I was saying. Fail! Oh shit! Come on, Rob. Why are you so noob? Sorry, I don't mean to be so noob, guys. Um. Oh well, I'll mention it again later if I remember. Now that we've connected this up, uh, we can tell this guy, we can say, hey, down here, we get down to our export bus, we can say, hey, move single items and craft, and always export in here iron or dust. And that should instantly start. Export bus, iron or dust, moving, moving craft. Why is that not getting... Well, it made one. That did connect. I know it connected. Hmm. That's a lot. Did it store it? Yeah, two types of 63 right there. Let's just stick this back in here. Let's, j let's jostle this a little bit. Always craft items, move single, move stacks. Why the hell is that not working? This is the controller. Well, why does it say it doesn't have fuel anyway? It's got plenty of fuel. Accept the block. 
Oh, this works so fucking flawlessly on my... Hang on, I'm gonna redo this. Let's get back down here. Doink. Doink, 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 and doink. There it goes. Now we're filling up. I don't know why that broke. That was a little random. So now what this is gonna do is this is gonna craft up every single one that it finds in there into these iron dust blocks, and it's gonna stick them in here. Ha, oh, man. Now, if we also say... Uh, let's get some gold. Gold dust. No, not gold dust. We want gold. We don't want pulverized gold. This is it? Yeah, there we go. From the ex Nilo. And we can tell the same thing here. We can say, hey, usage, shift click, make us gold, and code. Clear. And we can put this guy in here so it can make that as well. And we can just jam this in here to get stored as well. And we can get a block of this bitch. Thank you. And we can come over here. We can tell the same guy to also do gold. And we stick that in there. And now we should see, start seeing gold filling up in here. There, there we go. So the gold's now coming in. Nice. So that's how you're going to do this. You're going to get gold and you're going to get iron. And it's going to be in the same smelter. So you can see the iron ingots are filling up. Now the gold is smelting. Very butamous. And let's also do copper, because why not? Copper doesn't combine with gold or iron. So we'll get copper. And I'm only doing dust so far, but this works for anything. So here's copper gravel. Copper gravel, I should say. That comes off the broken ore. So let's get a stack of this. Let's say broken ore. You can do this with every type of every ore. Okay? So we go usage, question mark, and code. Bam. And we'll stick this guy in here. And we will stick these inside the system. We will say, give me one of these. And he'll give us one of those. And we can come over here and tell him, also do copper broken ore. And bam, that'll start filling up. See that? Zabow. And that will get burnt down as well. Now, here's a couple things about this. Uh, number one, this will always export them all the time. And it will melt up in here. And it will just sit there until you do something with it. Number two is going to be that this is assuming that you don't want to process these ores further. Let me show you what I mean by process these ores further. I'm going to get out of creative mode for a second here, but I'm going to grab a hammer. There's a couple of ex nihilo hammers. I'm just going to grab a few of these just to show you. And I'm going to grab some broken... No, I'm sorry. Uh, gravel. There we go. Here's the gravel ores, various gravel ores from ex nihilo we want. So let's just say, let's just grab copper here, because that's what we were looking at, looking at a second ago. And I'm going to say game mode... Game mode zero... There we go. So now I'm out of out of creative. Now if I place this down, we take one of these hammers, and the wooden one is two planks and two sticks. The stone one is two cobblestone and two sticks. The iron one is two iron and two sticks. And basically, the better the hammer, the quicker it smashes things. So look, see how fast that went? Now if we use the cobblestone one, see it smashes a little bit quicker. And the iron one, I think, is even faster. Yeah, it's, a little, it's even a little faster than that. The, the difference is durability as well. It's not just speed, it's also durability. Wooden hammer can only smash 60 things before the durability goes away, okay? The stone hammer can smash twice that, and the iron is quadruple that, or double the stone. I believe it's double anyways. I haven't actually tested those completely. So basically you smash these, right? Let's get rid of these for a second. And then you can craft these into the copper ore sand. Now look at this. You saw I had 24 of those that gave me 6. I smashed 5 of these, and I've gotten 6 out of it. Because I started with a stack. I had 64, now we're 59. That's 6 of those used. Or no, I'm sorry, that's 5 of those used. 4, 64, minus 4, 60, minus 1 more is 5. So that's 5 of these. We got 6, enough for 6 sand out of that. It's a little bit It's a little bit way of, of extending things. We can now smash this. Let's just smash all of these really quick here. We'll pick up the dusts. And that's where the pulverized version comes from. So you're going to get some of these naturally anyway because you're sieving with our auto loot setup that we set up last episode. We are able to automatically sieve these. We can these the pulverized copper ores. The pulverized ores will come out of the dust. The um, other ones. What was it? Shit. Game of one. Um, copper. I think it's broken. Is the f crushed? Okay, so crushed comes out of the sand, and broken comes out of the gravel, whereas pulverized comes out of the sand. You can smelt all of them straight up in the smeltery or combine them into the respective ones, but if you use a hammer, remember we had 24 of these a second ago? 
Now we have 29 from doing that again. Because you have a 25% chance of getting an extra one every time you smash one. So if we take a crafting table, because I'm back into creative mode here. Now we got seven of these instead of six. So we went from, we did, we started with four, we got to six. We started with five, we got to six, now we're at seven with one extra from there. So basically it's a mechanic, it's it's not quite a doubling mechanic, it's just a way to extend your, your output by 25%, okay? Now if you if you smelt these directly in here, you can see we got smelted, or we got molten gold, molten iron, and molten copper in there. If you put those in there directly, you won't be extending them. So instead of putting them in here, what we can do is we can take a storage bus or an export bus. Let's just go with an export bus because we're assuming that we're storing everything first. So we're going to go precision export. Actually, I already got an export, didn't I? Yeah, I did. And we can take a terrain... No, we can take an autonomous activator because that's our auto clicker. Okay. And we can put an auto clicker down. Let's say we just put it right here. And we put another one down right here. And we can tell this guy, let's get some cobblestone here. Let's just say we got a cobble gen going on. You've got tons of cobblestone laying around. And we can tell this hey, hey, guy, hey, make me a hammer. 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 Recipe, shift click. Actually, let's not use those sticks. Let's just use regular. I think it's smart enough to not use those sticks, to use regular sticks, but there you go. So we can go in code. And now we can tell this guy, hey, now you know how to make a hammer. Cool. And then what we can do is we can just take a pile of sticks. Because I'm assuming that you probably have a tree farm as well. So I'm going to put a pile of sticks and a pile of cobblestone in here. And you can tell this guy how to turn wood into sticks, uh, wood into planks and planks into sticks in here as well using the same recipe. And we can tell this guy, hey, let's get an export bus. And I'm going to put an export bus here. And you have to get in here to the interface. You have to say enabled low and you have to tell him to accept input from the top, okay? And then you can tell this guy, hey, make me a hammer. Gimme. It'll make you a hammer. And then you can tell him to move, move single items and craft, hammer. And look at that. He's going to start filling up with hammers because the system is making hammers and exporting them into the bus. Then you can tell this to left click. Not right click, you want that to left click. So if we stand in front, he'll be hitting us. You can't see it now because I'm in creative mode, but hey, he's, he's smashing things right there with the hammer. We can do the same thing over here. Leave this on right click. Make sure to tell him to input from the top. We'll put a precision export bus on top. And what we can do is I can tell him, hey, broken ores, let's get more of those, those broken copper ores. Uh, where's our, there we go. And I can stick this in here. And instead of putting this right here, we can say, hey, nuts to that. Don't take the broken copper ore over there. I want you, let's just put this in here. Why is, it's putting him in there again. You son of a bitch. I think it took it a few seconds to update that. I don't know why that... Yeah, because it didn't... It didn't use all of them. Just a lot of them. So give me one of these guys. And we can tell him, hey... Ignore that. It took a second for the game to update the fact that I didn't tell him to do that anymore. So he's just going to burn that up. So just assume that you've got your stack in there. We can get another stack. Copper. Broken copper. We'll just stick that in there. Cool. And then we can tell this, hey... Uh, also, move and craft copper. And he's going to start receiving copper ore. Any second now. Yes? Hmm. I'm thinking I'm having some sort of weird... Hey. Get your ass back over here. I'm going to replace this because it took a second to update from over there before, too. So let's move and craft. Copper ore. There we go. Now he's going to be making these. See that? He's using up these and he's making these and he's crushing them. Awesome, huh? So now you got to get a way to get into the system. So let's make an interface. An ME interface receives everything into the system. But you got to have a way to get in there. The interface is your way to interface with the world. So it can export items, but it will store it kind of like a chest. This is its own internal storage buffer. So anything that gets in here that isn't set to come out will go into the storage system. It'll end up in one of those storage chips. And then we'll take a vacuum hopper. Let me just show off the interface really quick. It's a similar recipe as everything else. No one of those conversion matrices, a cable, three glass, and four iron ingots. We covered all that already. We'll put a vacuum hopper in there, and he'll just pick up all that iron ore that just came. you got to have some way to pick it up and to put it in there. Okay? 
And then we're going to open this guy up. We'll click on the top so he exports. And look at that. It goes into the system. That hopper is now empty. And if we look in here, look, we got 111 crushed copper ore total out of the 88 that we started with or so. So look, see, we got about a 25% increase. And he's using up these hammers slowly over time. But once these hammers break, the system will just create another one and put it in there. Okay? So let's take up some of these. And we can say usage. And we can say question mark. And we can say encode. Or shift question mark. And now we can make this into the sand. See that? Now we can make it into sand. And I can tell this guy, hey, give me one of these really quick. And he'll give me one. And we can come over here. We can say also do the same thing. And that's the vacuum hopper. Excuse me. We can say also do the same thing with the sand. See that? Now it's going to start crushing the sand. And it's going to be giving us pulverized copper ore. Awesome. Now we can say usage. We can say question mark. We can say encode. And now we know how to do the sand as well as... So we can basically process down from, from uh, broken ore to sand ore to dust ore. And we slowly over time, that's how you're going to get your doubling mechanic on. Or but not your doubling, it's not a full double. It's a 25% uh, boost. That is how you're going to get your uh, you get your ore processing on in terms of extra loots. Extra loots! It's free and it's extra at the same time. Now here's a couple words of warning. Number one, these auto clickers, autonomous activators, from thermal expansion are really expensive now. We've got a piston, which is your iron ingot, your redstone... Four cobblestone, three planks, two emeralds, two diamonds, a pneumatic servo, which is a redstone, two iron ingots, and two glass, and a chest. That's expensive as shit. That's not what it normally costs to make one of those, but for agrarian skies, because ex nihilo can be manipulated by these auto clickers forever and a day, you want to make these, but they are expensive as shit. So, in order to actually make enough of these, you have to consider that those are expensive as hell to do. But also the fact that you need to make sure to have cobble gen and a tree farm to make these hammers because you need to be able to make sticks. Also, you need to keep in mind that these can only accept nine inventory slots apiece. So if you aren't careful, you're going to end up with back backlogging a lot. You're going to have an auto crafter machine and it's not going to be able to keep up with just one of these. Those smash those pretty quick and pick them up into the hopper really fast. But the thing is, is that uh, nine inventory slots might not be enough. So you're not so it's seven ores you're processing. Gold, silver, iron, copper, tin, lead, and... Gold, silver, iron, copper, tin, lead, and uh, platinum. Seven things with nine slots. But it's not just seven things. It's seven things times three. Because you brought broken ore, sand ore, and dust ore. Okay? So seven times three, you got 21 things you're dealing with and only nine slots. So you might need to make multiple of these setups. Luckily, these vacuum hoppers can reach a nice bit. So you can put them in the middle of, like, five of these, probably. I personally, at the very least, if you're going to do this doubling mechanic, at the very least, would have one of these setups per ore. So at least seven or at least seven setups. But to be completely honest with you, if you don't want to have to worry about processing, this is infinite free loots after all. You don't necessarily want to have to double every single thing all the time. So you could just dump the broken ores straight in here anyway. Maybe just set it up so that it automatically crafts them into blocks to not take up so much room in the smeltery, and then just dump them in there and not worry about doubling. That's probably what I would do. In fact, that is what I did on my playthrough. I didn't worry about the doubling mechanic, or the 25% increase mechanic, rather. I just said, fuck it, I'm getting this free infinite anyway from our auto clickers, and just went with that. So now that you got your smeltery ore in here, what do you do here? Well, that's pretty simple, too. We are going to take a servo, which I covered already, and a fluiduct. Fluid. Fluiduct. And you're going to put a fluiduct on each one of these. Okay? And you're going to get a cover. Let's get a crafting table. And we'll just put this back here for the moment. And I'm going to get a diamond. And we're going to get a tool rod. Stone tool rod. And we're going to get a couple of sticks. And these tool rods, which I only got one of, even though I need three. Uh, you get four of them from two stone or two of them from two cobblestone. And then you just make a pattern like so, and you're going to get yourself a saw. Diamond saw. And let's get a cobblestone here. And if we saw this guy up, bow, 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 bam, you get covers. And you can place these covers between here to make sure they don't connect to each other. Because we don't want them to connect. Okay? We're going to upgrade each one of these guys with a servo. 
and we are going to set these guys to automatically output but first what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get a bucket of these guys okay now, how do you get a bucket you ask that's a good fucking question and actually i don't remember offhand ah oh, you need a molten bucket can you molten ore I think there's a way actually to cycle it. Can you? Hmm. Well, we're going to set each one of these to whitelist. How do you get a bucket of this? Can you just bucket? Molten copper bucket. Yeah, but how do you get it into like... Well, you can move which one of these is coming out first, but that's not exactly going to be helpful for us. Um, hang on one second, guys. I should probably go look up how to make a bucket of this. Boy, that's a fucking fail. Man, shit, Rob, come on. Okay, hang on, guys. That was easy. You just get a casting table and put a bucket on it and, put it and just pour it out. So let's do this. Let's get a casting table really quick here. I guess I could fucking look in any eye. <laughs> And then we're going to put a bucket. Did I actually get a regular I did. So you just right click the bucket on there. And you're going to get a faucet. And just put him right there and right click him. And look, that's going to get you some gold. Wow, that takes a while. Bam. So now we have a, a molten gold bucket. We have a molten copper bucket. And then if we come in here, we can say now do iron. Make sure to just a standard left click will move which one of these guys is going to come out first. And we'll get another bucket. And we'll right click them on there. And now we got iron coming out. Cool. And we're going to want to replace this with a casting basin because obviously we're using this for... Actually, it doesn't matter on this side right now. Uh, this is more than enough. Even if you did everything in this smelter, you're not going to use all nine sides of this anyway. So whatever. I'm just going to leave that casting table right there anyway. So now we have a bolt in the bucket, bolt, molten iron bucket, molten copper bucket, and molten gold bucket. And we can fill this in right now for, well, not at the moment quite yet. So we're going to whitelist this. We're going to say only bring out gold. We're going to whitelist this, only bring out molten copper. And this guy will only bring out molten iron. Cool? Cool. So then what we're going to do, molten gold, molten iron, and uh, copper. Where's our copper dust? Oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, copper, dust, no. Copper dust ore right there. I'm just going to like whitelist that right now and then fill this in. That way we don't have, because we're done down there basically for the moment. We're done down there unless we decide that we want to add more ore. So that's how you do it. Just Because so you, you guys have already seen it now, so I'm not going to worry about it at this point. So we have, oh, we got more melting up because I had more in the system apparently. Oh, yeah, because we, we crushed it up right here. So cool. So now what we do is just we write, we wrench this guy, we wrench this guy, we wrench this guy, and he is going to pull out all the iron. The iron is going to come out first because that's what's on the bottom. Okay, so once the iron comes out, it'll harden into uh, stuff, a block of iron, basically. The reason why we're using casting tables for this is because it's nine, it's nine ingots basically, and I need to move this cable down one uh, right there and break that off because we don't want that right there at, the, at this moment. Uh, we are going to be doing ME import buses. Import. Now the difference between you can use actually you can just use a basic import bus. It doesn't matter. We did the precision precision export on the front of there because we're giving it multiple things to export. But the import bus is just going to be your ME interface, a sticky piston, and two iron ingots. The difference between that and the export bus is this guy is just a regular piston instead of a sticky piston. You need the you need the precision on the uh, controller because you need to tell him multiple things to craft and output. But you can just use a standard basic import bus right there, right there, and right there. And it turns out that we actually did need that there because I'm a dumbass. ME cable because he does need to be connected up to the system. So there we go. We'll break that out of there. Just like so. It's a beautiful thing. And you can see that the iron block went away and some more iron some more iron came out. The copper block came out, formed, and went away, and it poured more copper in there. See that? Now the copper is going to go away. And as soon as the copper goes away, the gold will start going away. And where did it go? Well, into the system. Look, we got two iron blocks already. 
And we got uh, four, four copper blocks coming in. Come on, give me another one. That one's going to harden up and come out. And now we see we got five, and it's going to just keep pouring it out. So infinitely, basically, is what's going to happen is this is all going to be auto-clicking and making us loots, which we covered last episode. And it's going to dump into the... Oh, it's not actually dumping into the aces. Let me get an interface. I already covered how to do the interface. So we're going to just go ahead and we're going to plop one here. We're going to plop one here. We're going to plop one here. And then we're going to get our ME cable. These have to connect, like so. And then you, you can just run this underground, probably. That's what I would do. Is I would just bring him over here, like so. And I would just run this straight underground. That's why I build really thick platforms, is because I like to hide things. Because I'm very, very, very um, oriented for... Um, neatness. I like to build neat things. I like it to be pretty. I just I just like it to be pretty. <laughs> so yeah, we'll cover that up. And then we'll connect this up. I don't know why I didn't do it in the first place. So that's all going to come out. So basically what happens is now, this is fully automated. The auto-clickers are going to be auto-sieving our loots from last episode. If you didn't check that out to see how this works, go check that out. We can just turn this on and it will automatically dump everything into the storage system. See that? It came up, it went in there, and if we look in here, we can now see we're getting shit. See all the ores coming in? We got a bunch of broken ores coming in already. Uh, there's a Quicksilver drop, there's an Amber, there's a Pulverized Platinum. This is your automatic loot coming in at all times. So it's free infinite loot forever, and that's how to make it set up to automatically process. Look, the copper's finished, now it's working on gold. Oh, it's already done! Look, all the gold's already out of there. So if we check in here, we can see, oh look, we got two, two, two blocks of gold, two blocks of iron, twelve blocks of copper, because I kept putting copper in there, no big deal. So now you're getting all these dusts, and that's how to process the dust into that. I'm going to turn this off because we don't need it on for the moment. So basically you would just repeat this setup. Uh, you could put, um, you could put like lead and stuff over here. The only reason you need a second smeltery, I know I set up two, is, is so that you can put uh, nickel somewhere else. Because if you want to process nickel ore, you don't need to process nickel ore automatically. Oh look, we got enough copper to melt something down already. And these fluids will just sit in this basin until it gets enough to make a block, and then it will just go away. So you don't need to worry about those sitting in there, that's perfectly fine. So you can use one smelter to do everything. Uh, as long as you don't put nickel or... You could just use one smelter, to be honest. Let's actually think about this. You don't have to use two smelteries. If you don't plan on processing your aluminum or your nickel, because why would you? Aluminum ingots and nickel ingots are not really necessary, because you can do everything else with the iron and tin and everything. So you don't need the nickel. Uh, if you do want to process the nickel and aluminum, though, do their own smeltery for those. That's really all you got to think about, so it's not really that big a deal. But anyway, that is how to automatically ore process everything. You can, just, you can just extend it forever until you're done extending it, until all the ores have been taken care of. I'm going to stand in front of my setup here just so you guys get your screen cap, because I know you all like to take pictures at the end of the day and collect them. Hope everyone enjoyed the automatic ore processing smelteries from the Free Infinite Loot setup from the Agrarian Skies theme build spotlight. Hope you all enjoyed it. Make sure to like, favorite, follow, subscribe, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter. Slash Rob the OP Gamer. Peace.